I knew going in they were going to use my school photo, but it's, it's still, still shocking when I see it now. Uh, so I love reading, and I have for basically my entire life. Uh, the first book that I can remember reading on my own I was a little kid book, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? And I've kept going since then. Uh, most recently I read A Canticle for Leibowitz, uh, but in between those I've read thousands of books. Uh, I've read A People's History of the United States, all of the Warriors books, and another series about owls, all of the Harry Potter novels, and the terrible stage play. Uh, the Dave Abad trilogy, Heralds of Valdemar, Fun Home, Norse Myths, and most of Brandon Sanderson's bibliography among many, many others. And this love of reading has expanded into a love of stories in general, although I do, I do still harbor a specific, special affection for books. Uh, and this then transferred into me creating my own stories, which I have now been doing for most of my life. For example, when I was little, I had a lot of Legos. Um, and I did build the sets, but most of what I did was I used the minifigures as characters in a long-form epic that I built up over the course of years. Uh, I had lore and in-world explanations for everything, including how the same characters would reappear despite dying. Uh, it's very in-depth. And I've moved on from Legos, but storytelling is still important to me. I have begun writing. I wrote a novella for my IB personal project, and I've kept on writing after that. And that means that I think a lot about stories and the way they work. And f figuring out what stories are trying to say is a big part of that, because all stories are trying to say something. I believe that all stories are political. Stories are a vehicle for the ideology of their creator. The way a story presents its world and characters automatically pushes the political beliefs of the people that created it. Now, there are two distinctions in this. Uh, next slide. The first is that not all stories are intentionally political. Sometimes those themes just end up in there. Uh, and secondly, not all stories are necessarily meant to be viewed or read with those politics in mind. Uh, and that gives us three categories. Uh, note that these categories are not mutually exclusive and different elements of the same story can fall into different categories. But uh, the first category on the top right. These are stories that intentionally have political themes and are intended to be read with those politics in mind. These are stories where the politics are the point. The motivation for creating the story is to be a vehicle for the author's ideology. And that sounds tedious, but this inc category includes most works we consider to be literary. Uh, the Great Gatsby, The Heart of Darkness, and The Grapes of Wrath can all only be understood as stories through the lens of their politics and their relationship to the world. It's an inherent part of their being. Now note that not all stories in this category are critically acclaimed or successful. Many of them are massively misunderstood or just plain bad, and their ideas aren't necessarily coherent or well executed. I am about to talk about Ayn Rand. Uh, the most visible way that stories explain their politics is through their world building. Atlas Shrugged establishes that in Ayn Rand's world, the vast majority of humanity are parasites, incapable of innovation, and only a small handful of people actually contribute to society. This allows Rand to turn the novel into a parable about the virtues of selfishness, using that world that she created to rationalize her beliefs. The world and story of the book are a vehicle for her political ideology. That's the first category. Now, the second category, bottom right, is weirder. These are stories that intentionally have political commentary, but aren't necessarily intended to be viewed with that in mind. Uh, this category includes a lot of famous movies, one of which is the original Star Wars. The movie is very directly political. The Empire wear Nazi uniforms and rule through fear. The rebels are terrorists who operate through precise strikes on military and government targets. Everyone who is lovable or kind or interesting is a rebel by the end, whereas the imperial leaders are cruel and inhuman. Star Wars is saying that authoritarianism is bad. It might be an uncontroversial political stance, but that's still a political stance. 
The thing is, is that A New Hope is not intended to be viewed with that in mind. The point of the story is not the politics. The point of the story is to have fun. The intention of the movie is for the audience to go on a fun space adventure with Luke Skywalker. That's the second category. Now, the thing is, is that a lot of the works in the second category are propaganda. Top Gun is a thrilling, well-plotted, feature-length recruitment ad for the U.S. Navy. The Navy are the good guys, the naval sailors and officers are the upheeling heroes, and it says that being a naval aviator is a fun adventure, not a complex moral choice. But the thing is, is that the idea that a movie about a real existing military organization can be a fun adventure at all, that's a political statement in and of itself. Further, it was created, made in cooperation with the Navy that it is depicting. It's propaganda, uh, like much of category two is. Now, the second category is weird, but the weirdest category is the third category, the bottom left. These are works where not only did the author not intend for the audience to engage with the politics, the author did not intend for the politics to be in there at all. Now, this most often appears in long corporate franchised series, like uh, the Warrior spin-offs or some of the Star Wars EU novels. And this happens because these works tend to be very derivative, and that means they inherit the politics of the people and cultures who created the works and tropes that they derive from. This, so it isn't necessarily intentional by the author. Uh, so the example that is most personally significant to me is The Belgariad. Uh, next slide. It is a children's fantasy series that was written with the express intention of taking tropes and traditions from the high fantasy genre and putting them into one saleable book series. Uh, however, this means that this series inherits the regressive political bias of the high fantasy genre that it derives from. For example, uh, one of the tropes it uses is the missing line of kings, of which the main character is revealed to be the last living descendant, and thus, the rightful king. Uh, it was a reveal so predictable that even my 10-year-old self saw it coming. But the thing is, is that's just the divine right of kings, which is a real-world political belief. Additionally, uh, the Belgariad leans very heavily into gender essentialism, and the idea of race as a meaningful construct is a core tenet of the series' world. In this, all of the races depicted are fictional groups of people, but each of those fictional groups has its own set of traits and skills that are shared of every member of that group. There's the race of merchants, the race of spies, the race of assassins, and others. Only very rarely are characters depicted as not having the traits embodied by their race. That is immensely political, but David Eddings, the author of The Belgariad, was not an ideologue. He did not intend for the 12-year-olds who were reading his books to support the monarchy or embrace racial stereotypes. He wrote the series for money. He realized that the fantasy genre was underserved and potentially lucrative, so he wrote a series that was intentionally an amalgamation of other ideas from the same genre. The Belgariad was not written intentionally to have a regressive political agenda, but it does. Those ideas ended up in there anyway. It, this is an example of category three. And so the thing is, is that what all of this is building up to is that all of these categories are political. All of these categories have political themes. All stories fit into one of these three categories, so there's legitimate analysis to be done on all stories. All stories have political agendas because political agendas are an inherent part of stories as a construct. The way a story presents its world and its characters is shows the author's ideology. These are all independent decisions, but whether consciously or not, the choices the author makes when making those decisions are motivated by their beliefs and their values, their politics. The story they write then reflects the politics that they have, because those were, that was the inspiration, whether consciously or not. And the thing is, is that the stories we consume and the stories we believe shape the way we see the world. And stories from children's novels to blockbuster movies, they have a power. And it's not a power that we can opt out of. But what we can do is we can think about stories and what the effect they have on us. And in order to do that, we need to know what stories are saying. Thank you.